Hi everyone, I'm here again with James, my friend, who you may remember from our videos about physics horror stories. Um, we did undergrad together and we seem to have a lot of these horror story type you know, memories from our physics degree and I thought it would only be complete and fair to make a good memories version, otherwise we're presenting a very skewed view of the physics degree. Um, but I sort of struggled to come up with good memories and we've had a discussion already about some memories and we've sort of been racking our brains to think of things and I don't know if this is because there are inherently less good memories than bad ones from a degree. Or if the bad memories are just really funny. Yeah, I, I tend to enjoy like fails and, and, and failing like as my good memory, laughing at those times or if maybe it's a psychological thing where you remember traumatic experiences more than good ones because the good ones just you know, pass through. Top 10 physics fails 2018. <laughs> Top 10 physics fails, not clickbait. <laughs> Um, so we have managed to come up with some things, so we'll talk about some of our stories. I think we'll go through an order from like first year upwards. Um, and these are some of our more positive physics stories for any of you aspiring <laughs> physics majors out there. <laughs> All right, so the first one I have that I want to talk about was in a first year math course. Um, we had quite a cool lecturer who decided to go a bit artsy on the math. So um, she said, well, here's some chalk, go out somewhere in the university and draw one of the concepts we've been learning about in class and like draw a big, you know, chalk illustration of it. Um, and then like the best one wins a prize, like post a photo of the best one. Um, so I remember the one that we did, like it was just the two of us working together, I think. If I remember <laughs> rightly, it was, about the day before the lecturer where she was going to hand out the prizes and we procrastinated and not done anything. Oh yeah, because we're very last minute people. <laughs> so I remember it started raining, we're thinking, oh no, rain, chalk, this is not going to work. Oh yeah, yeah, I remember it was like, we're like, oh we can't draw our chalk illustration in the rain, this is not a good idea. But on the other hand, we were like, but she's going to hand out the prizes tomorrow and if we don't do it now, we're not going to win a prize. Uh, so we took our chalk out in the rain um, and yeah I do remember walking around and finding like one dry spot on campus where yeah. there was like an overhang building and there was like a small spot of cement on the ground that wasn't wet and we're like that's perfect and we drew something that represented the Taylor series. The Taylor series of a sine wave. Taylor series of a sine wave like um, we called it tailoring polynomials and we drew like a big like suit like that you'd wear and like a needle and thread as in like tailoring the suit. <laughs> we had some pun going on. Um. We had like the thread coming off the suit was waving in a sine wave and we had like the Taylor series for a sine wave following that. Yeah and I, I think I have that picture somewhere. I may try to find it. <laughs> like I said to you my pictures are not organized. <laughs> um, and that was pretty good, like we, we had some fun out there being, you know, putting our math on public display and we won a prize the next day. <laughs> Specifically because it was dedication to mathematics for going out in the rain and writing chalk on ground. Yeah, yeah, we won a prize, we won a bag of lollies that I like gave away to our friends because I didn't actually want them. But I also remember that because this had been the only dry spot in the rain, it was like a really rainy day that actually for a really long time after this it was still there like everyone else's paintings like washed away ours was just still there for at least like i don't know a month or something afterwards yeah it was a pretty long time <laughs> because it was literally in the one place on campus that never gets wet so it just never got washed away and it was just like a public menace to everyone <laughs> on campus probably thinking what the hell is this <laughs> um so that was sort of a pleasant memory that was first year First year is also when we did astronomy for the first time. <laughs> Back when we were budding astronomers who were going to go into the astronomy field and learn all about stars. Yeah. Yeah, in first year astronomy, basically the overview astronomy 101 essentially was learning about all different corners of the universe. So we learned about star formation and even star death and how supernovas happen and that supernovas are actually just the entire star collapsing in on itself in about half a second and then all of that matter just bouncing back out and that's what the supernova is, just this massive 
balance effectively. Mm. And we also learnt about the sort of history of the universe going back into galaxies and early galaxies. Yeah, that was quite a cool course because unlike something like first year physics, where they don't do any of the cool stuff. They just like, here is a slope, here is a ball rolling down the slope, do this for an entire semester. Here is a box on the slope, <laughs> does it slide? Maybe it slides, <laughs> sliding spun. How many Newtons does it take to hold the box? Like the first year physics courses are very mundane, but the first year astro course, they are actually like, you know, here, this is all of the cool stuff in the field. Here is the supernovas, here is like star formation. Like it was just the cool stuff. So that was a nice course. Yeah. Um, and probably a good memory, that one. Yeah. Moving on into our second year memories. This was an ill-fated experiment <laughs> from one of our lecturers. Um, there seems to be this trend I've seen in lectures where the lecturer wants to make it interactive. They might have read some research or something that says, you know, if you get your students participating more in the class, they learn better. I feel like that was the theory behind this. But the lecturer was like, okay guys, welcome to your math class. Um, I'm gonna put a link up on the board. Everyone with smartphones, just like everyone, go on this link, you'll basically get into a chat room. And I'm, this is a place where you can ask questions of me while I'm writing notes on the board, doing this like linear algebra stuff. You can ask questions, live questions, and I'll answer them <laughs> as I'm doing the lecture, you know, like post all your problems up here. And of course, everyone just immediately logged on and just started saying the most randomest <laughs> off-topic things. Like people were just sort of like having a conversation on the chat board, just coming up on a projector while the professor was writing notes. Yeah, it was projected at the front of the room really large. So, you know, it was the idea was that she would see the questions as they come in and as she's writing. But really what happened was that we were communicating with the rest of the class. <laughs> with the rest of the class anonymously. on a giant chat room anonymously <laughs> um, from our seats. So like that was actually a hilarious day and just so ill-fated. <laughs> yeah, I think at some point she saw the board, was a little bit horrified. And I guess, long story short, we never had that happen in a lecture again. I, I, I guess she thought she could trust us, but even at any no, level, no, you no, give no. someone anonymity and being able to post comments that are displayed to a large number of people and you're going to have it go to chaos. Yeah. Another second year story. And to be fair, I don't know if this quite qualifies to be in the good memories list. This is more of a fail that I remember fondly because I was laughing about it, um, but at the time it it was, you know, I guess not the most pleasant. So this was, um, I think, second year physics lab. Yeah. We're doing something with lasers. You remember exactly what we're doing? I don't quite. So this is a fairly typical uh, laser experiment that's fairly easy to perform. It's basically frequency doubling, where you take a neodymium laser, which is at 1064 nanometers, and you shine it into a crystal called KTP, and that through quantum magic, <laughs> frequency doubles the laser from 1064 nanometers to 512, which is right in the visible region. It's very bright green. Yes, yeah, so you change the color of the laser light yeah. through this process. And mm. it's a pretty cool lab, but things went a little bit wrong. So we were like in a dark room in like a group of maybe like five or six people or something? Yeah, about that. And um, it was a very fiddly lab. So I think we had like three hours or something to be in this little room fiddling with tiny little dials to like align the laser just right because it, when, it, when it was perfectly aligned it would do this like frequency doubling, it would change colour and we were waiting for that to happen. We were just like in there arranging things. So to sort of set the scene, you have to imagine a pitch black room with a 1064 nanometer laser which is in the infrared. So you can't see this laser at all and it's completely dark so you can barely see what you're aiming at and you're trying to just make micro adjustments to get this very <laughs> invisible laser pointed at this very, very small crystal. Yeah. And so we'll only know that we've done it correctly when we see the laser, you know, come out on the other side. And when you see this green light coming out. When we the see other the side. green light come out the other side. And I think the thing is that infrared laser is dangerous, like to your eyes. So yep. we were wearing safety goggles, so you know, and because, everything went wrong. Because they're safety goggles, they need to block out infrared, which means they're actually green tinted. Yeah, so <laughs> that means that um, 
I guess there were many, many hours of fiddling with the dials and saying to each other, we just can't get it to work. Yeah. And then eventually someone was like, I can't see anything with these goggles, I'm going to take them off. He takes them off and then immediately says, what's that thing on the wall? There's a green dot on the wall. And we're like, what? No, no, we can't see anything. And then everyone takes off their green glasses and suddenly they can see a green dot on the wall and it turns out we'd Yeah, we'd suddenly had everyone's cheering. Um, positivity has erupted and we realise that the hours we spent fiddling and like tr being like, why isn't it working, why isn't it working, is because we literally could not see the laser light with the colour of glasses that we had chosen to use. So it was a fail, um, but it's, you know, having that relief and like funny outcome after hours of trauma and struggle just makes it, you know, a good memory. Enjoyable, <laughs> An almost. enjoyable thing, like a, a funny story. Um, yeah, so that was like a, a fun time because we were in a group and like we could make light of the situation and I think... <laughs> Hi! <laughs> it's actually a segue also into my next point, which is like most of um, the good memories in a physics degree are to do with the people I was doing it with and like the friends. So I, I mean, I, I feel like I only have good memories because of the friends I was with. So working together on assignments and group projects, those projects became fun because of the people I was doing it with. Specifically, even those <laughs> really difficult, tedious projects that take you up into the early hours of the morning but then when you finally have that finished out and everyone sort of understands the assignment now you've got all of the writing done and it's written up nicely and it makes sense and you hand it in and it's satisfying this it? <laughs> relief of understanding and of being completed yeah and I think um, like I have a lot of good memories of sort of us and a few others working late at night maybe at uni on these assignments to get them to that final state. In front of a whiteboard, just <laughs> arguing with each other, like, this is how you do the equation. No, 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 we do it this way. No, this will be easy. Yeah. And then someone grabs a pen, they're like, no, 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 this, I know, I've got it. I've had a revelation. I know how to do it. And then they do it. <laughs> and we're still arguing. <laughs> um, but then we'll, like, go and get food or something um, from, like, yeah, you know, nearby. Comfort food. Go grab some food, bring it back to the whiteboard and, and continue the arguing. Um, so, yeah, like, the the group aspect of doing this may, made me have a lot of memories which I guess are not directly relevant to physics but were like a vital part of my physics degree experience. Another one of the most valuable parts of the physics degree in terms of getting enjoyable memories out of it is actually what you do in between semesters or as like a research project so often you will have opportunities to do like internships and summer research projects somewhere and you actually you know, get to forget about exams and assignments and just work on a project, often that you've chosen, so that's something you're interested in, for a summer. Um, and those were really valuable. So I did a summer research project when I was still studying in New Zealand here at ANU, which is where I've ended up like doing honours and PhD. And that was an enjoyable experience because I was, you know, with a bunch of people that are like-minded and we have like a lot of social activities and we're all researching things we're really interested in, lots of discussions about interesting research and it's like your first taste of I guess that kind of academic life but you're taken there very slowly and it's you're still sort very of, enjoyable. <laughs> you're sort of stepping out of the book work and into the real world. Yeah, anything that doesn't involve like the stress of exams just leads to a much more positive environment I think. Definitely, yeah. Yeah, so what did you do for like your... <coughs> I don't know, research projects. So in my third year, I kind of had been lazy with looking into projects. I know Toby had already applied to come over to ANU to do a project, but I'd left it a bit late. And one of our professors said, so we've got this summer project with the chemical engineering department where they're actually working on 3D printing, but they're doing it using lasers. So they need a physicist to help. And I was like, so basically there are lasers and 3D printing involved. That sounds pretty cool. I'm going to go for that. And one of the um, tasks that I had to do was actually modeling the laser going through our solution as it tried to print something and sort of just looking at the solution heating up. So basically solving the heat equation throughout time as the laser's moving through. This was my first time sort of mathematical modeling and it was quite a bit of a challenge. It was really difficult, but after about a, a week of just playing with this model, I finally managed to get this 
animation of this bright laser coming through and you could see the solution heating up around it and then that laser would travel and you could see like the heat as like a wave moving forwards as the laser traveled and sort of tailoring back as it started to cool off. And after all that sort of hours of hard work and just sort of pulling my hair out trying to play with the code, I had just, you know, a really a really nice image that looked mm. really cool. And like this is actual physics. Yeah. <laughs> I think it's that sort of satisfaction again, like of actually doing something that was really difficult and then, you know, seeing it in its final form or like in a satisfying state yeah. where it makes sense and you feel like you've done good work. I think a lot of people that study physics do it for that, you know, feeling at the end of doing something that that they understand and that they're proud of. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yes, I, I think that's why it's really good to try and like get into doing some research because otherwise you might not get to see some of this, like actual physics in action, you just are doing exams. And you might be planning to do a PhD and if you never do any research before then, you might think, oh, physics is boring, it's all exams, I don't want to do a PhD. Or you might get to a PhD and then you think, I've never done research before, I don't actually like this and I want to leave. Yeah, yeah, I'd agree. So like I actually even did some astronomy like internships um, at the end of second year, I did one here. and. Like I have memories from that of staying up like all night observing like on a telescope and that's the kind of experience that someone like me would really enjoy. You know, you're interested in physics and astronomy, but you only get it by applying for things like internships and research projects. So yeah, I'd, I'd really recommend them for someone looking to make some good memories. <laughs> some of our good memories that aren't related directly to coursework come through like the physics society, like PhysSoc and just like the community that formed around being a physics major. Um, so, I mean, I did a lot of like physics society stuff and one of my like good memories from all that was just our ready availability of liquid nitrogen to do basically whatever we wanted with it. Um, so what did we do? Like ice cream and stuff. At, yeah, like, making <laughs> ice cream using liquid nitrogen and just handing it out to students saying like, here, join up to PhysSoc, have some ice cream. <laughs> Yeah, we just seem to have a lot of liquid nitrogen around to, you know, do things. And um, what were you telling me before, like, when we disposed of it? <laughs> yeah, so our great plan in FizSoc was to attract students by showing them really cool stuff. So, like, we'll get some liquid nitrogen and we'll just pour it on the grass and make this really cool puff of smoke and that'll attract all the students because they'll be like, oh, what's that? That looks really cool. Then we get there, we pour some liquid nitrogen onto the grass and then there's a big puff of smoke and then all the students look and go, oh, no, there's a big puff of smoke. Let's quickly, let's run away. And then suddenly we'd have no students around us. <laughs> so they would leave and then once the puff of smoke clears there'd be a puff of dead grass. A puff of dead, <laughs> very frozen grass. <laughs> I think we killed a lot of grass as physics students. I have no one from our uni is watching this, although they might be. Um, I hope the grass is growing back now. <laughs> Which is why ethics is actually important in physics. <laughs> yeah, so that was a good memory. Um, something else you mentioned from, like, from the Physics Society was that night they ran of like bad science. Yeah, so during my honours year we did this sort of presentation night where similar to when you're doing your third year or fourth year projects you're expected to give a talk in front of the class and some of the professors. Basically what this was, was instead of giving a talk on our research we gave a talk on just the most pseudoscience topics we can think of. <laughs> so some of the popular topics were things like crystal healing and quantum meditation and other just sort of buzzwordy scientific things that make absolutely no sense that, that people would just sort of stand up and talk about and be as outlandish as possible. Yeah, like to have a like room of physics majors talking about that stuff and acting very serious was, you know, it seems like a very good idea. It's <laughs> kind of hilarious. Thing, yeah. yeah, like I said, there are some good memories scattered in amongst the horror stories. <laughs> We don't want to mislead you too far. <laughs> but yeah, thanks James for being in another one of my videos. Yeah, no worries. <laughs> giving me some stories and, and reminding me of things. Yeah, see you guys next time.